So this was sort of the original idea, catastrophism in ancient cultures. And cosmographic, in the, in the old um, definition, which I find in older dictionaries from about the earlier 20th century up to about the mid, up to the 60s and 70s, is the definition that I like. And that's the definition that we've chosen here. And it's, I'll read it. Cosmography is the science which describes and maps the main features of the heavens and the earth embracing astronomy, geography, and geology. A description or representation of the universe or world in its main features. And it comes from the Greek cosmographia, which just simply means a description of the world. So the things we would mostly be looking at would be those, those um, topics that were listed there, astrono astronomy, geology, geography, which would encompass a lot of looking at maps, integrating those maps with, um, with um, studies of landscapes and landscape evolution. I think one of the things we would be looking at a lot would be geomorphology, which is the study of the form of the earth, because the form of the earth is the end product of a whole series of processes. And I think at this point, we're sort of standing on the precipice of a, of a new model of understanding Earth history in that the old models that dominated science were, were the strictly gradualistic models, the uniformitarian models, whereas now the model is one of punctuated, to, to, to um, borrow the famous term, punctuated equilibrium, um, to borrow Stephen Jay Gould's term, which I think is, is very appropriate for what we're talking about here, the process, is that there's two modes of global change. There's the mode that we've experienced within modern history, and then there's the mode, the, the punctuations within the continuum, where you have, um, you have change accelerated by orders of magnitude. And so the contention here is that, or the working hypothesis, if you want to put it that way, is that it is these, uh, these short-lived episodes that really are doing most of the work that has, whose end result is the landscape we've inherited, the landscape upon which and out of which we have built modern civilization, right? And so one of the other ideas of this is that the entire planet bears the imprint of these great transitional events. And we're only now at the very infancy of beginning to recognize the scale of the and frequency of these events. Not only how they would have um, affected life, the evolution of life and, and, and the, the, the biological domain on this planet. But now we're getting into understanding how these nonlinear of events have uh, influenced or affect actually human history. And this is where the, the, it comes from being an abstract discussion about the history of the world to a much relevant discussion about how these forces how these transitional phases may affect how they have affected culture, civilization in the past, and how they could do so in the future. So catastrophism, the other thing that I think that we would be addressing quite a bit in here, in these series of podcasts, we will define as the doctrine that certain vast geological changes in the Earth's history were caused by catastrophes rather than gradual evolutionary processes. So these are, I think, some of the key ideas, but around those, we may be discussing a lot of different, different things. Um, you know, for example, so much of this kind of the insight that that's, is now being provided to us by science through, through the, uh, the investigation and the study of the earth below our feet and the, the heavens above our head is that we have inherited a legacy of ancient knowledge that also pertains directly to this, to the understanding of these uh, changes that have occurred uh, in the history of this planet. So when we begin to look at religious doctrines and, and, and mythological uh, tales and, and folklore, things like that, we begin to find that, yeah, there's common threads throughout all of this, recognized you know, many decades ago by people like um, Carl Jung and uh, Joseph Campbell and Mercier Iliadi, that there are these sort of archetypal forms. Behind these forms, there might be residing actual events. But now these events were of such a scale and power and potency 
that they left an imprint upon the collective human psychology and have we've carried this stuff down with us and we've preserved in the form of myths and 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 legends and tales um various articles, stories etc cetera, etc cetera, knowledge and information about real events events that are we are now investigating scientifically so the idea is here that we will be looking not only at, at, at the su very scientific, the cutting edge science that's going on relative to these to these realms of inquiry, but also this this uh, incredible uh, corpus of ancient knowledge that has come down to us in these various forms. So at many points throughout this, it, it will be very helpful and interesting to segue off of the what we would think of as the hard science into some of these more traditional. Um, venues uh, of information and knowledge yeah. so so the, the 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 forum for discussion is pretty wide pretty wide reaching under the terms of uh cosmography and catastrophism we will be talking about earth change no question we'll be talking yeah. about volcanoes we'll be talking about you know the sun we'll be talking about asteroids and comets and impacts uh we'll be talking about mass extinctions we'll be talking about ice ages we'll be talking about mega floods just in that list that I've given you there, there's almost a lifetime of, of fascinating and, and powerful information around those things. And every week, new things are being discovered. Uh, so, of course, we cannot avoid talking about um, the human past and the idea of ancient civilizations. So uh, we, we're not going to stray or shy away from talking about the effects or consequences of these kinds of events for previous cultures and even be open to the idea that there have been civilizations that existed in prehistory whose memory has been lost to us because of the nature of these global changes that have up until now been underappreciated by the scientific community, particularly those who are trying to reconstruct or to create models of our past. Yeah. So, I mean, there's plenty of fertile feel there to of of things that we're going to get into in these talks